Now, for more perspective on Kiev's uh, conquests and ambitions, let's talk to Marcus Papadopoulos, uh, editor of Politics First Web magazine. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, considering it took the military almost uh, three months to take back Slavyansk, when we're talking about Donetsk, there's 20 times more people. Is Kiev really ready for the challenge, do you think? Well, that all depends on whether Kiev has the resources to take on a city as large as Donetsk is. And what we know is that they certainly have no moral compunction in killing hundreds of Ukrainian civilians through mortars, through tank shells, through airstrikes. However, what we also need to consider is whether or not Washington and Brussels, who are the backers of Kiev, whether they would be happy with Kiev prosecuting um, a major offensive against um, a very, very large city such as Donetsk, which could bring about utter bloodshed. It could result in hundreds, possibly even thousands of civilian casualties. So on the one hand, we need to consider whether Kiev has the resources, has the ability, the know-how to, to uh, confront a city in a battle scenario. And on the other hand, whether Washington and Brussels would be happy um, for Kiev to do that. And I don't mean um, from a moral perspective, because we know that uh, the American government has no moral compunction in seeing bloodshed around the world. We've seen that in Syria. We've seen that in Iraq. But it wouldn't look very good from a PR perspective if, um, if their puppets in Kiev all of a sudden have an immense amount of blood on their hands. But why do you think that we've seen a sort of change in strategy in Kiev? You mentioned yourself that we're seeing the military resort to artillery, mortar, airstrikes and attacks. Why do you think they've changed their strategy now? Because um, they can argue we now have, in the form of Petro Poroshenko, a democratically elected president who is a legitimate president. That's what the Ukrainian government will argue. And of course, that's what their backers in Washington and Brussels can argue and are arguing. Therefore, the Ukrainian government can prosecute an offensive of any nature now, knowing that the Americans and the Europeans are backing them. So no matter how bloody it will get, um, the Ukrainian government knows that Western media is not going to report on it, because Western media follows the line of Western foreign policy. And if things get difficult for the Ukrainian forces in, say, Donetsk, undoubtedly there will be some form of military assistance being given by the Americans and the Europeans. That could be um, expert soldiers sent there to advise the Ukrainian commanders. It could also be in the form of uh, satellite information, logistical support. But also we can't rule out that the Ukrainian forces could be receiving military hardware um, from the Americans, possibly Marcus, former Soviet uh, you, equipment. You said yourself that the U.S. has no morals when it comes to bloodshed around the world, but still we're seeing dramatic of footage, we're seeing the videos, we're seeing the humanitarian crisis right now in the east of the country. Where is the condemnation? You mentioned yourself, for example, when it comes to Bashar Assad decimating the city, uh, he's a villain. So why is there a different treatment when it comes to Ukraine and the U.S. State Department and the U.S. in general? Well, I wouldn't draw a comparison between Syria and Ukraine. I think they're very different situations. But um, it's only news outlets such as RT who are actually telling the world what's happening in eastern Ukraine. And what's happening in eastern Ukraine is a horror show. We're talking about civilians, including women and children, dying on a daily basis, being maimed on a daily basis. But the Ukrainians will keep on doing that because they are backed by the Americans, principally, also the Europeans, but America is a superpower and they are backed by them. And now that they can claim they have a legitimate president, they can go for an all-out victory in the East, starting with Donetsk. But also, we need to make it very clear, undeniably, Kiev is on a roll at the moment. They have scored numerous undeniable military victories. However, the next battle will be to win the hearts and minds of the population in eastern Ukraine, who they have terrorized for the last few months, terrorized with mortars, with tank shells, with airstrikes from helicopters and combat planes, and with Scud missiles. So they might be winning militarily, but they've got to now face another battle, and that will be quite a battle to win the hearts and 
minds of the people they've been killing and injuring on a daily basis. Absolutely. It will be very hard to regain that trust, as you said. Marcus Papadopoulos, editor of Politics First Web magazine, thank you very much. A video of an intense clash between Ukraine's National Guard and anti-government fighters has been posted on the internet, reportedly filmed at a contested border checkpoint. Давай правосека замочи. Оставшиеся в живых. Сними всех. Сними, да. сними, 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 сними. Патронов нет, мы сосем по полной программе. Зато есть пирожки. Зато есть пирожки. The two sides have fought over this checkpoint for more than a month now, so it's no surprise that this is what it looked like after the battle. You can see yourself, the place is deserted. And according to conversation heard in the video, the outline area is heavy with snipers.